Morgan here for Onefinity, and today I'm going to show you how to perform a tiling operation on your Onefinity CNC. Tiling allows you to create large scale designs that exceed the physical cutting area of your machine. Well, on one axis at least. The Y axis is wide open on both ends. So the capacity of the Y axis on your machine is technically infinite. Wow. As long as you can support the material hanging off, you could carve material a mile long. My local lumber distributor was fresh out of mile long boards, so instead I'm gonna demonstrate on a full four by eight sheet of plywood. But what to cut? Well, I've always wanted to have a life size operation game, so I guess I'll do that. But after my last project, I don't really feel like messing around with electronics, so I need something simpler. Rather than incorporating a buzzer and all that, I'm gonna make this into a new fangled version of cornhole. So where you'd normally try to carefully place body parts, there's gonna be holes to toss bean bags into. And each hole can have a different point value. Okay, I like this idea, but I'm not wild about this guy. Just this big bellied naked guy. It's kind of weird, kind of gross. I'll just go ahead and swap him out with something a little bit more family friendly. Perfect. Now I just got to fix the name for copyright purposes, obviously. There, that's better. Okay, let's get this tool path. I'm gonna open Vetric and start a new project that'll be the dimensions of my material. Four feet wide, eight feet height, and 0.46 inches thick. It's never actually half inch thick, it's kind of annoying. I'm gonna set my XY datum to the bottom left corner here. I'll import my vector. And the first tool path will include the whole outline of the body, face, and point values. That's gonna get filled with epoxy, so it doesn't need to be all that deep. I made it a V-carve engraving tool path, cutting 0.0625 inches deep, that's 1 16th, with a 90 degree V-bit, using the feeds and speeds I normally use for this bit. 120 inches per minute, 20,000 RPMs. Piece of cake. The next one's gonna be for the Hopperation logo. Doing that with a V-bit would take forever, so I just made it a pocket tool path, again, cutting 0.0625 inches deep, with an eighth inch spiral bit. I'm using that because the logo has a bunch of sharp corners and the bigger the bit, the more detail I would lose. So an eighth inch bit will leave a tiny radius at those corners, but barely noticeable. It's just a little compromise to save time. The last tool path is gonna to be for those organ shaped holes. Those are gonna be cut out completely, so it's just a simple profile tool path, cutting inside the vector at full depth with a quarter inch spiral bit. Child's play. Now that we have our tool paths, we need to tile them to fit the machine. So I'm gonna check all these boxes and click on the button here that says Tile Toolpaths. That'll bring up the Tiling Manager. Check the box that says Tile Toolpaths and select the Feed Through in Y option. Then you'll need to specify the height or Y axis capacity of your machine. I'm doing this on a foreman, so that'll be 48 inches. If you have a journeyman or a woodworker, your height will be 32 inches. Then click Update Tiles. In the Tiling Manager, there's a drop down menu that shows how many tiles there are and which one you're viewing. This project only has two tiles just because of the size of my design and the material. When you save your toolpaths, make sure the output tiled toolpaths box is checked. It'll separate the toolpath into separate G-code files, making the beginning of the file name specific to which tile that portion of the toolpath is for. T1 meaning tile one, T2 meaning tile two, and so on and so forth. Okay, we have our G-code. Now let's get the machine set up. And this part honestly was probably my biggest challenge of the whole project. My foreman normally lives under the outfeed of my main workstation, and the whole workstation is more or less a big enclosure. So doing a tiling operation in there wasn't an option, meaning I'd need to relocate the machine to the top of the bench where there'd be enough clearance in front of and behind the machine to be able to feed material through. Well, that sucked. <laughs> Woo! One of the really nice things about One Affinity machines though is how dang simple they are to put together. I disassembled the machine, put it up on top of the bench, and had it back together in about 10 minutes. And I don't know of any other machine that that would be that easy. Anyway, I know that the top of the workstation is good and flat, so I grabbed an extra sheet of three quarter inch ply to use as my wasteboard. I also had to cut a few blocks to mount the rails on so that the gantry blocks could move freely. It's not pretty, but it'll do just for this one project. Now it's important to position your material with the corner right at the machine's default home position because we're maxing out the capacity here. You'll also need to set up some sort of fence along the y-axis so that when you reposition the material between tiles, you'll have a consistent reference edge. I'm gonna mark the very front edge of the material on the wasteboard and make another mark exactly 48 inches down the material. When I move the plywood, I just need to line up those two marks and there should be no gaps or overlaps in the carve. I zeroed out my X and Y at the machine's default home position because remember, we're using the machine's full capacity. 
I zeroed out my Z more toward the center of the material because I'm not super confident in the flatness of this whole setup. And this is plywood, so I can't really run a flattening toolpath, so I'm just hoping that there's not too much variation. Okay, I think we're ready to start cutting the first tile. Let's open T1 body outline and fire it up. Looks like my worries about the material flatness were justified. It seems to be sticking up higher toward the middle of the sheet, so the bit was cutting deeper, resulting in a wider outline. I'm not too worried about it though because I'm using a V-bit, and as it travels along these vectors going from shallow to deep, the transition is gradual. So yeah, the lines are going to be a little bit thicker toward the center here, but that's not going to affect the design too much. Anyway, aside from some flatness issues, I'm pretty happy with how the bottom half came out. Now I just gotta move this sheet down exactly 48 inches to run the second tile, making sure to keep this left edge here tight to the fence I set up. After moving the sheet, I secured it back down and ran the toolpath for the second tile. Those file names will start with T2. The first toolpath finishes up the body outline engraving and the organ hole cutouts. Then I just gotta run the pocket toolpath for that super clever logo, and we're all done. I'm pretty pleased with how well everything lined up from one tile to the next. After that, I just poured some epoxy into the engraved parts, sanded everything flush, and did all the stuff to make it a cornhole board. I didn't film that part because this video is not about making a cornhole board, it's about tiling. And I think we pretty well covered that. And I don't expect to see anybody replicate this project on account of its Absurdity. And if anyone out there does want to do what I've done here, stop it. Get some help. So whatever you want to make, if it's bigger than your machine's capacity, this process works like butter. Delicious butter. Just got to keep a few things in mind. Support overhanging material and keep it flat. I didn't do a great job with flatness, but the upside for that is most of it I used a V-bit. So the line widths aren't super consistent, but it looks pretty good. Maintain a consistent reference edge at X0 and keep your material tight to that edge when you move it. Lastly, don't make a life-size operation version of yourself, or of me, that's weird. But now you know how to make real big stuff, so go make something big and cool. Well, that's all I have for you today, and as always, I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, like, comment, all that stuff. Next project video is gonna be more practical. Maybe, probably, I don't know. Thanks for watching, y'all be good.